For decades, we've been conditioned to look outside ourselves for solutions, a pill for every problem, a synthetic fix for every biological challenge. But what if the most powerful operating system was already running inside you, waiting to be understood? This is the peptide masterclass you've been waiting for. I'm going to pull back the curtain on peptides. We will explore exactly what they are, how they work with surgical precision, and why they represent one of the most significant revolutions in human health and performance. Hey, I'm Dr. Mike, and by the time we're done, you'll be equipped to cut through the noise of online gurus and so-called experts. You'll understand the science so well that you can identify misinformation in a single sentence because you'll be fluent in the native language of your own biology. Let's begin. Now, before we dive into the deep end of the molecular pool, it is essential to get the formalities out of the way. This is not meant to treat, diagnose, cure, and is purely for entertainment. Research peptides are not for human or veterinary use. If you know, you know. So what exactly is a peptide? Let's start at ground zero. The term gets thrown around so often that its meaning has become diluted. Half the world thinks it's a new supplement at the vitamin shop, and the other half assumes it's some kind of synthetic steroid. Both are fundamentally incorrect. At its most basic, a peptide is simply a short chain of amino acids. That's it. These amino acids are the fundamental building blocks of life. But while a protein can be a colossal structure, sometimes thousands of amino acids long folded into complex origami-like shapes, peptides are the opposite. They are short, surgical, and precise, typically between 2 and 50 amino acids in length. Think of it this way. A protein is like a full-length novel, sprawling with intricate plot lines and detailed characters. A peptide, on the other hand, is like a short, direct text message with a character limit. Both are written in the same language, the alphabet of amino acids, but one is vast and complex, while the other is razor sharp and straight to the point. And in human biology, getting straight to the point is everything. Your body is a gigantic, constant communication network. Cells are perpetually talking to each other from your brain to your big toe. The language they use? Peptides. When one cell needs another cell to perform an action, whether it's to divide, repair tissue, release a hormone, or even alter its metabolism, it doesn't send a long-winded thesis. It sends a tiny coded message, a peptide. These peptides interact with receptors, which are protein structures sitting on the outside of a cell. Each receptor is like a lock, and each peptide is a specific key. When the right peptide finds its matching receptor, it doesn't just unlock a door, it flicks a switch inside the cell, initiating a cascade of events. And these cascades are not small, they are amplified at a ridiculous scale. A single peptide binding to a single receptor can ripple into thousands of downstream effects. That is the source of their immense power, despite their minuscule size. Most people don't realize that the molecules running their entire life are, in fact, peptides. Insulin, which regulates your blood sugar, is a peptide, growth hormone. Releasing hormone is a peptide. Even oxytocin, the so-called bonding hormone, is a peptide. Your mood, your metabolism, your body's repair signals, and your growth are all riding on the backs of these tiny molecular chains. This is why, when we talk about using peptides therapeutically, we're not talking about introducing something foreign to your system. We are borrowing your body's own language to articulate a command more clearly. This is where physiology truly matters. Large proteins can misfold, creating chaotic, dysfunctional clumps that can lead to diseases like Alzheimer's. Peptides, because of their short length, avoid this mess entirely. They are direct, stable, and efficient, which is precisely why the body chose them as its primary signaling molecules. To put it simply, peptides are the operating system commanding your biology. They aren't the hardware, they are the snippets of code that tell the system what to do, when to do it, and how much to turn the dial. And when you can speak that code, the possibilities become limitless. But how does this process actually work from the moment of administration to the final biological effect? Let's follow the journey. The journey begins with a subcutaneous injection into the thin layer of fat just under the skin. This method is crucial because it allows the peptide to enter circulation gradually while completely bypassing the digestive system. If swallowed, the stomach would obliterate these precise molecules, breaking them down into useless fragments. Once in the blood, the peptide is carried throughout the body like a molecular courier. But unlike a pharmaceutical drug which often acts indiscriminately, the peptide is on a mission for a very specific recipient. A drug might affect numerous pathways, leading to a wide array of side effects. A peptide, however, is designed for specificity. 
It will travel everywhere, but it will only interact with the cell that has its matching lock. This process is called docking. The shape of the peptide is everything. The body is covered in receptors, and each one is waiting for a key with a matching shape. An incorrect key is completely ignored. But when the right peptide clicks into place, it's not a forceful event. It's a smooth, surgically precise interaction. This docking causes the receptor itself to change its shape, a conformational change that acts like flipping a switch. Suddenly, the inside of the cell lights up with activity. This is called signal transduction, the conversion of an external signal into an internal cellular action. This is where peptides flex their power over pharmaceuticals. One peptide binding to one receptor doesn't just create one effect. It sets off a ripple an incredible cascade. Secondary messengers are activated, enzymes turn on, gene expression ramps up, and entire metabolic pathways shift gears. It's the biological equivalent of one person flicking a single switch that illuminates an entire stadium. The initial signal is small, but the resulting effect is massive, coordinated, and powerful. This brings us to a common point of confusion, half-life. Many people obsess over how long a peptide stays in the system, but the duration of the molecule itself is often irrelevant. The signal may be lightning fast, but the cascade it initiates is incredibly long lasting. Take insulin, for example, its half-life in the blood is measured in mere minutes. However, its effects on your body's glucose metabolism last for hours. Once the process starts, it becomes a self-sustaining engine that the body carries forward. When you administer a peptide, you aren't trying to keep the molecule around forever. You are simply trying to deliver a message. Once the cascade begins, biology takes over and runs with it. And what happens when the job is done? The signal gracefully fades. The peptide is either broken down into harmless amino acids, or it's stopped by the body's own internal feedback loops. Your body has built-in breaks for its own signaling systems. This is another key difference from drugs. With many pharmaceuticals, there are no breaks. It's all gas. They keep hammering a pathway until the unwanted effects pile up. Peptides work with the body's system of checks and balances. At its core, peptides work not because they hijack your biology, but because they are your biology. They are the short-lived, precise messengers that deliver clear instructions, trigger massive physiological events, and then exit the stage without causing collateral damage. So why are they so profoundly effective? It comes down to one principle, alignment with your own biology. Drugs are exogenous. They're outsiders, foreign molecules designed in a lab to brute force a pathway. This is why drugs almost always come with a list of side effects. They weren't written into the body's original code. They kicked the door open instead of using the key. Peptides, however, are the native software. They are already part of the operating system. You're not hijacking the system. You're simply running a software update, providing a clearer signal or restoring a function that has diminished over time. This is why the body responds so cleanly without the confusion or chaos often caused by synthetic drugs. Furthermore, peptides are often multi-contextual. The same peptide can play different roles depending on the tissue, receptor density, or the current state of the body. A repair peptide, for instance, might upregulate blood flow in an injured muscle while simultaneously calming inflammatory processes in the gut. One signal, multiple coordinated and intelligent responses. This is why peptides scale so efficiently. They don't just solve a problem in one isolated corner. Their effects ripple through the entire system. Instead of being a single hammer looking for a nail, they are like an entire toolkit that adapts itself to whatever repair is needed. Now we must address one of the biggest and most persistent myths in this space oral peptides. Let's be unequivocally clear. For therapeutic purposes, oral peptides do not work, ever. This has nothing to do with marketing and everything to do with fundamental physiology. The moment a peptide is swallowed, it lands in a bath of hydrochloric acid. This acid is so potent, its entire job is to denature proteins and unravel amino acid chains into scraps. That precise key you need to unlock the cellular receptor, it's instantly dismantled. The peptide is shredded before it can even get close to your bloodstream. But even if a few fragments were to somehow survive the stomach acid, they next face a gauntlet of digestive enzymes in the intestines. These enzymes are professional bond breakers. They chop everything down into single individual amino acids. By the time anything reaches your gut wall for absorption, that sophisticated peptide you swallowed is indistinguishable from the raw protein fragments of the last piece of fish you ate. The signal is gone, but what about the advanced oral formulas? Supplement companies, knowing this, try to play Frankenstein. They slap chemical modifications onto peptides like polyethylene glycol or PEG in a process called pegulation. Let's be clear, PEG is a petroleum-based polymer. It's essentially a liquid plastic. Not only does this distort the peptide's shape 
preventing it from binding to its receptor correctly, but the compound itself can be inflammatory and toxic. You're attempting to solve one problem by creating a potentially larger one. This is why every legitimate clinical study, the ones that generate real replicable results, uses injectable administration. It bypasses the digestive destruction and delivers the intact signal directly to the bloodstream. It's the only route that respects biology. Now let's discuss where peptides become exceptionally powerful, synergy and stacking. Because peptides are modular, they don't compete, they complement. This is why stacking them with other interventions creates effects that are profoundly effective. Consider TRT. Testosterone provides the raw signal for growth. When you add growth hormone releasing peptides like CJC1295 and apomorelin, you're not just adding more fuel, you're optimizing the entire engine. Together, they can create a powerful metabolic environment, helping to build lean tissue and improve recovery. Or look at SARMs. Androgens are great at driving muscle growth, but they don't do as much for the connective tissue that supports it. Stack them with peptides like BPC-157 or TB-500, and now you're not just adding horsepower, you're reinforcing the entire chassis. You build a more resilient functional system. Even stem cells, which are incredibly potent, benefit from peptides. Stem cell therapy can be expensive and is not always successful. Why? Because the cells need the right environment to thrive. If you drop them into an inflamed, metabolically dysfunctional body, they will fail. Uh, peptides create that fertile soil. They improve blood supply, enhance cellular repair, and reduce inflammation, creating the ideal environment for those stem cells to do their job. They multiply the return on investment of the therapy. Peptides give you control. Uh, stem cells, once injected, are largely autonomous. Peptides, however, deliver a specific intended signal every single time. For most goals related to daily health, recovery, and performance, peptides offer a more precise and cost-effective approach. This is because peptides amplify fundamentals. When you train, you can recover faster. When you diet, you can preserve lean muscle more effectively. When injured, you can heal in weeks, not months. The muted cellular signals of aging can be restored, turning down inflammation and turning up repair. A pharmaceutical might give you a 10% edge while carrying significant risks. Peptides can offer a much larger advantage with a negligible penalty because you're not fighting your body. You're speaking its language. Of course, intelligence is key. Not all peptides are meant to be run constantly. Some, like BPC-157 or GHKQU, can serve as a daily baseline for repair and health. Others, particularly those that strongly influence the growth hormone axis, should be cycled intelligently to avoid receptor desensitization. It's like a training program. Some movements are staples, while others are periodized for specific goals. But what about the side effects? The most common issues are trivial compared to pharmaceuticals. You might experience temporary injection site irritation that lasts for a few minutes. Some people might experience mild water retention if they use growth hormone secretagogues too aggressively. The solution? Dial back the dosage until it resolves. These are not complex problems. Compare that to common pharmaceuticals that can demolish libido, destroy gut lining, or impair liver function. Peptides don't even play in the same league of potential damage. They are restoring pathways, not hijacking them. And to address the elephant in the room, no, peptides do not cause cancer. This persistent myth is unfounded. In fact, some peptides are even researched for their anti-tumor properties. The narrative that they induce uncontrolled growth is a fundamental misunderstanding of their mechanism. They restore normal function. They do not create rogue processes. Yet even with all this information, some will argue that using peptides is somehow inauthentic or cheating. And this is a bizarre argument. Is it authentic to be sick, weak, and inflamed? Is it cheating to use your body's own signaling molecules to repair damage and perform at a level that was previously unimaginable? That isn't a commitment to authenticity. It's a commitment to suffering, often championed by the same people who engage in countless other unhealthy, unnatural behaviors without a second thought. Peptides are not a fringe experiment. They are the biological language your body already speaks. They don't introduce toxicity. They add clarity to your body's internal communication. They work because your receptors can't lie. They outperform pharmaceuticals because they are native, not foreign. And they multiply the ROI of every single positive effort you make for your health. When you understand this, you stop playing defense against aging, injury, and decline. You start playing offense. You begin to operate your own biology with intent and precision. The choice to remain ignorant in the face of this information is just that, a choice. But this isn't cheating. This is the future of what it means to be a healthy, high-performing human being. Let's recap the essentials. Peptides are short amino acid chains, the body's primary signaling molecules. They work via a lock and key mechanism with cellular receptors to initiate powerful biological cascades. 
They are incredibly effective because they are part of our native biology, unlike foreign pharmaceutical drugs that hijack systems and cause collateral damage. Oral administration is ineffective due to the destructive nature of the digestive system. Injectable methods are the only way to ensure the peptide reaches the bloodstream intact. Their true power is unlocked through intelligent stacking, where they synergize with other health interventions to produce compounding returns on your efforts. Ultimately, peptides are a tool, a profoundly effective tool for anyone serious about moving beyond the baseline and actively managing their own health, performance, and longevity. They represent a shift from a reactive model of healthcare, waiting for something to break, to a proactive model of optimization, where you are the architect of your own well being. The information is out there, the science is clear. The only remaining question is what you will do with it. Thank you for joining this masterclass. The goal was to provide clarity and cut through the misinformation that clouds this topic. Knowledge is the first step. You are now equipped to ask better questions, to demand better answers, and to make more informed decisions about your own health journey. Remember, the most sophisticated technology on earth is the one you inhabit every single day. Learning its language is the ultimate investment. If you found this information valuable, please support the channel by liking this video and subscribing for more content on the cutting edge of health science. Explore our other deep dives to continue your education. Stay informed, stay critical, and continue to learn. Until next time.